My name is Jeffrey Chibgundu, and I, I am the son of the late Bernadette Naiga and uh, Edward Visase of Mbarua Namgongo. I have been in Canada for the past 17 years. Well, uh, before I came to Canada, I had an opportunity to visit this country, and I knew kind of what to expect. I knew a few people, so unlike some people who come here without knowing anybody, I knew a number of people. So it was kind of exciting because I had a number of years to prepare for it. So 2004, uh, we came, my wife and uh, my son. So my son was three years old and my daughter was one year old. So we left back our uh, everything we knew back in Uganda, our families, our friends, our property, our jobs, we packed up two big suitcases and we embarked on this journey and we arrived in Montreal on 30th March uh, 2004. In the evening of the 30th of March 2004. Coming uh, into Canada with the family, yeah it's true I knew where I was, I was going because uh, seven years earlier I'd spent uh, two and a half months in Montreal and I knew people there but it, it was kind of daunting at the same time, with two young children, you have to take care of them. My wife, of course, she didn't know where she was going, but she was excited. But again, it is kind of nerve-wracking to begin afresh. Uh, you are going into a new environment uh, where you are not used, it's, the weather is different, uh, what you are going to expect is different, the, uh, the geography is different, the food is different. It is nerve wracking to say there is. When I visited Canada in 1997, that's when I learned of the possibility to migrate to Canada as a skilled worker. So when I got married, I talked to my wife about the possibility, but we didn't really uh, discuss it much. But when our son was born, I, our son was born uh, one year into our marriage, when he was uh, two months, that's when we started the process of, of, processing, uh, of processing everything to be able to move here. So yeah, no, it was not a difficult decision to make. Of course, we, had, we knew that we had to start afresh, we had to look for jobs, we had to start uh, to establish new contacts, but it was, it was not, it was not uh, a, a difficult decision to make. Of course, we are younger, not, not as old as we are right now. I guess younger people are more adventurous than older people. So the, the decision was not hard to make, I, I would say. So I taught in, in Makere University. I was a teacher of French. So, but when I came to Canada, my, uh, my uh, plan was to go and work full-time as a freelance translator. When I came to Canada, I knew that uh, yeah, it would take time for me to get the kind of job I needed, I wanted in uh, my profession, but I knew, and also talking to people who had been here earlier than me, Ugandan immigrants who had been here earlier than me, there's what we call Nkubacheyo. So I knew that I would go into other fields that are not related to my profession, uh, less rewarding work, but that would be able to help me to pay the bills and to feed, to feed the family. So when I arrived in Montreal, there's a, a couple of friends I knew, and uh, within a few days, they had connected me to another person who was looking for court interpreters. So my first uh, assignment was to work as the interpreter, uh, English-French interpreter at the municipal court. But then also uh, I went into uh, a warehouse whereby I did some uh, shipping, product shipping, but that was kind of manual work, which was too hard for me. So after two weeks, I quit that, went into another warehouse where I did what they call order picking, so you get a, a, what they call a gun. So it, it's, a, it's a, a, a machine that you use to scan products. You scan products and pro prepare orders for, uh, in this case, we are preparing orders for 
these companies stores in the various uh, areas of Canada so I did that for about a few weeks and then uh, I went into a retail store where I worked as a cashier so I worked as a cashier and uh, that's when uh, after one year and two months I moved from Montreal and went to Toronto and when I went to Toronto uh, things were kind of easier within a few months I was able uh, to get a job in my uh, area of work. So what happened is well, when I left Montreal, I left my family back in Montreal for one month. I came alone. Uh, a, a family of friends helped me to find me a room with another Ugandan. I lived in that room as I worked on my uh, getting prepared to get a new job. Fortunately, I was able uh, to get something that I thought was uh, befitting of me. I got that uh, job and I settled down. I was able to find an apartment downtown Toronto. I rented that apartment before I went back to Montreal to bring my family uh, back. So I brought my family. Fortunately, uh, there was a daycare center in that same building. So we were living upstairs. Downstairs was a very well, well maintained and well managed daycare center where we left our two, uh, our two children. So the transition from uh, Montreal to Toronto was actually smooth, uh, thanks to Ugandans who are living here uh, before us, who helped us to settle down uh, quickly. Some of the challenges that uh, I faced, uh, my wife was a teacher back in Uganda, but she, she knew what she wanted right away. She knew that when she comes to Canada, she would be, she would be going to study to become a nurse. So two months after we came to Canada, she went to study. So there, uh, my journey as a very involved dad started. Before that, I, in Uganda, we had some home, people helping us at home, some family and uh, some relatives lived with us. We also had paid help, which we didn't have here. So I had to step in, step up, uh, take care of my children, this was not easy for me because I was not used to this. So my wife would leave early to go to study or to go to work. So I had to wake up the children, dress them up, prepare to take them. Fortunately, the daycare, as I said, was downstairs. So it wasn't so, so difficult. But of course, earlier on in Montreal, the daycare center was uh, about five, seven kilometers away. So then that one had been more challenging because I had to dress the children and take them in the snow. But it was easier when I came to Toronto. The family situation in Canada, as I said, we are just us. So me, my wife and the three children. And while my wife is not there, I have to step in. I have to cook for the children. I have to do the laundry. I have to clean the house. I'm not saying that my wife was not involved. She, she would do a lot of these things in the evening and to, 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 to make sure that uh, the morning was smooth for me. But again, as somebody who had not been involved uh, before, it was kind of challenging. But again, uh, these are things that are done earlier on in my childhood. I just needed to, uh, to, to, to get, have a refresher kind of. So I wouldn't say that it was very hard for me. And you know, you are taking care of your own children. Uh, you have to be more involved. You have to be more caring. Yeah, it is quite different from what I was used to, but it didn't take me long uh, to, to learn the new system of being more involved as a father. So here, uh, the children of, did not, uh, they, they are not, they are not raised in the same way like I was raised. Of course, I'm now in a different situation, I, I, this different generation. I would imagine that looking at, back at my nieces and my nephews, I think they are also diff, they have been raised differently from how me and my brothers were raised. But uh, it is kind of different here. So children, they have a voice. Children need to be heard. Fortunately, this is something I learned earlier on. So I went to school, talked to their teachers, the way the teachers talk to them, they will give them. So like in the parent-teacher interview, uh, the teacher will sit at the table, the, the, the student will sit at the table, and then the parents sit there, and then the, 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 the student leads the interview. 
they do the presentation, they encourage you parents to ask uh, questions. So that was a new learning for me. So raising uh, teenagers here, uh, in my case, it was not so uh, challenging, uh, not so challenging because uh, the children, uh, by their own personality, they are easy to get along with, but also because I, I raised them as babies, I knew, uh, they knew what I expected, what is right, what is wrong. Uh, so it was kind of not so hard to, to raise them, I would say. In the culture I was raised in as a, a Muganda man, the head of the family, uh, you had more power than uh, you would in these new situations. But uh, I'm kind of a person who reads a lot. I read about family, how to raise children, how to nurture them, uh, ensure that they have a voice. So it has not been so hard. I, I, and I actually have been encouraging them that when you, when you see where I am wrong, don't, don't hesitate to tell me. So it is not unusual for my children to tell me, Dad, no, you suck at this. This is not right. You didn't do that right. Uh, actually, just yesterday, uh, my daughter and her young brother went to a store to buy uh, some computers. So when they returned, I noticed that my daughter was not dressed in a way that I would have liked her to, to dress. So I told her, do you know that I don't want you to dress like that? Her, her brother came to her defense. He said, no, but she's dressed fine. I don't see, I don't see a problem. Well, we didn't make an issue about it, but I would like everybody to know that with time, when you understand that you are living in a different setting, you are living in a different culture, you have to adjust and uh, things will be easier that way. So as far as money is concerned, uh, it's not true that we have a, a lot of money over here. Like other families, working families, we have to work. We have uh, to budget for the money. We have a lot of uh, bills to pay, a lot of expenses. So it is not always easy when you have uh, people who need assistance, financial assistance. So what we've been doing, my wife and I, is to put aside a little bit of money a percentage of our earnings uh, to give to help other people. And we've been doing that diligently since we arrived in this country. And uh, it's not always easy because sometimes you need to sacrifice. Uh, you, 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 you can give up what you want to buy. Uh, or you are not going to be buying a coffee every day. You can spare that, the, the amount, the money you spend. So, uh, if you are the $50 you would spend, I don't know. People who buy coffee would tell us. $50 or $70, I don't know, you would buy, spend buying coffee. You can set it aside to be able to send uh, that $70 or $200 to a, a child going to a university or a secondary school back home. Okay, so as far as uh, family back home are concerned, the expectation Normally, I've heard that people think that, okay, so when people are overseas, they have high incomes, they are able to help. I've heard cases of young people who come here, uh, people, they have just arrived in Canada, but they are uh, facing in intense pressure to send money back home. But uh, people should understand that it's not always easy for somebody who's been here a couple of months to find a job and to find anything that is giving them a meaningful income to be able to help you uh, back there. So we should be able to understand that people need time to settle down. And uh, please, when somebody is able to send you a hundred dollars, two hundred dollars, three hundred, whatever it may be, appreciate that. In January 2020, uh, I left uh, the company I'd worked for for seven and a half years to set up my freelance uh, translation business. I am a translator from uh, French into English, working in my home office. I'm also an author. I've written three novels. Since I was a child, I was very interested in stories, telling stories. And uh, when I noticed that I have a gift of uh, write, composing and writing stories, I didn't hesitate. So I published my first book, the Son of Kasaka in 2013. 
and it's uh, actually it, it the story talks about Makula Msoke who like me uh, left uh, his family and everybody in Uganda and came and settled uh, in Canada so you could see actually some people thought that this is my life story it's not my life story but yeah there are a few things that actually were picked from my life but uh, yeah this story is it's good for somebody who would like to know what does it look like for somebody to move into a new country to settle into a new country like uh, like Uganda like uh, Canada so this book can be found on amazon.com amazon.ca and all other uh, amazon outlets so in 2017 i wrote and published uh, frenemy matriarchs this book was inspired by the stories that my grandmothers told me um, my grandmothers they all they were always talking about the challenges they lived with their uh, they found they met with their husbands who had a lot of power so when my maternal grandmother passed away in uh, uh, 2015 i thought I remembered her stories and I wrote this fictional book as a tribute to her. Then two years later, I wrote a sequel to, uh, to that book. And this one uh, kind of shows the difference. What my grandmothers lived and what my sisters lived is a, a whole world uh, apart. So you will see the new as opposed to the old. And these books can be found on Amazon.com. So anybody who has a dream of coming to Canada, it is possible. Young people, I encourage you, don't give up your dreams. You may meander, do a number of things that are not related to what you want to do, but please be hopeful. You have to remain optimistic and you also have to know where you want to go. I'm the kind of person who writes his goals. I write my goals, I set five-year goals, uh, I write them and I review them regularly. What this means is that I read them, so I, I have them at the back of my mind. So I've been doing this thematically and it has enabled me to achieve a lot of the things that I've been achieving. There will be obstacles, of, of course, there will be obstacles, but these obstacles can be overcome. And please stay with the community, look for help, find mentors. They will, be, they will help you. Mentors, are, these are the people who have traveled the, the journey that you want to, to embark on. Get a, a benefit from their experience and it will, be all, it will all be well and worthwhile in the end. So I've heard of cases whereby new Ugandans say, no, we don't want to, to, to deal with the, the Ugandans that are already here. Please don't do that. We are helpful, uh, come to us. Uh, come to our associations, we have our churches here, uh, come attend our churches, associate with us, we are helpful. Like I told you when I arrived here, I got uh, assistance from families, they found me a place to live in the first month, uh, they, 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 they helped me to settle down. So please, uh, as a leader in the community, I would like to encourage you, please come to us, uh, look up, look, look, find us wherever we are we have our churches here don't stay away from us please come we'll, and we'll be able to assist you in any way we can and all those other people who are thinking of coming to settle here there are challenges but it can be done so when you come you are coming to a new country probably you don't know anybody there or you know people you are coming to a different kind of weather it really gets cold here that's very challenging the winter is challenging many cold months but uh, gradually you get used to it. So when you come, you know you are going, you are settling into a new country. It's not going to be easy, especially at the beginning. But fortunately, the longer you stay, the, the easier things uh, become. Again, it is very important not to isolate yourself. It is very important to ask for assistance where you need it. Just keep in touch with the community so you are able to eat our home own food. You are able to speak a language, our language. You are able to mix with others, play games, meet with the community and, and so on. That's very good. But again, as I said, at the beginning, it's not easy. Don't, uh, before you leave, don't expect that everything is going to work out as you, you expect. Be, just be prepared that things, you, you, you'll have a plan. It's good to have a plan. 
but you know that the plan will not go according to what you, you thought it would go. But all the same, it will work out. So come, be hopeful, settle down, and uh, relate with everybody who is here, and everything will work out finally. Well, the program, Muna Uganda Munange, thank you very much for hosting me. I, I have had a good time answering these questions, and I hope that uh, people will find my story useful and it will help them, especially those who are thinking of uh, traveling and going to settle overseas. I hope that they've learned a thing or two from my story. Thank you very much.